Aloha mai kako. I'm Dr. Alika Manakea. I'm born and raised in Waianae on Nanakuli homestead land. I'm a biomedical scientist at the University of Hawaii's John A. Burns School of Medicine. As part of the Pacific Alliance Against COVID-19, or PAC, I'm joined by Dr. Pauline Chin from the UH College of Education to discuss the science behind testing and COVID-19 prevention. Aloha, I'm Pauline Chin from the College of Education, University of Hawaii at Manoa. I grew up in Kaimaki. Both my parents were teachers. My family on both sides came to Hawaii during the Hawaiian Kingdom. But why were so many people coming here at that time? It was unfortunately because so many Hawaiians had died from introduced diseases that there was a need for farmers and plantation workers. To prevent that from happening again, we've developed a few educational modules that talk about COVID-19 protection and prevention. Before we begin, it's important to understand that scientific research is progressing at a rapid pace, so there continues to be more and more new information coming out about COVID-19. This module covers the latest information we have and will need to be updated as more data becomes available. Our goal with this module is to demystify myths and misconceptions about COVID-19 testing, vaccines, and viral variants that we feel is helpful for prevention. By studying this module, you will learn about the current impact of COVID-19 in Hawaii and how it affects people, the different tests for the virus and why it is important to get tested, the vaccines against COVID-19, how they work and why they are important, Finally, the variants of the virus and why preventative practices should be followed even with the vaccine. COVID-19 is the latest introduced infectious disease. So far, for every 100 people who contract COVID-19 in Hawaii, nearly two have died. But the impact is far greater on older people, Native Hawaiians, Pacific Islanders, Filipinos, and people with certain pre-existing health conditions. Currently, anyone 12 and older can be vaccinated against COVID-19. It's free, and if at least 70% of all people in the state are vaccinated, we reach what we call community immunity, another way to say herd immunity, where the coronavirus can't find a vulnerable person to infect, and it eventually dies out. We did it with polio, and we can do it with COVID-19. But now, less than 40% of people in Hawaii have been fully vaccinated, and more infectious variants have arrived. SARS-CoV-2 is the name of the virus that causes COVID-19. It is short for coronavirus disease of 2019. It's called a coronavirus after the spikes that some people thought looked like a crown. In most people, this virus affects the respiratory tract. Some people may be infected but show no symptoms. They are asymptomatic. Without realizing it, they may pass the virus to a vulnerable person who may become severely ill or even die. How does SARS-CoV-2 spread? The virus spreads in the same way as do colds and flu, mainly through droplets and aerosols that are released when someone with an active infection speaks, coughs, sneezes, sings, shouts, or even breathes. The person spreading the virus may not even know they are infected if they have no symptoms. This is why getting tested for the virus is important. What are common symptoms and risks of COVID-19? Common symptoms are fever, coughing, and difficulty breathing. Most at risk of severe COVID-19 illness are older people with weak immune systems, people with health risks called comorbidities, such as cardiovascular disease, obesity, cancer, diabetes, even pregnancy. Also at risk, are people lacking health care, people who live in crowded conditions, and people who interact with many strangers. There's a lot of information on this slide, so let's take a closer look. Here's what we know so far about viral infections. The incubation time is short. Typically, this happens within five days after exposure, where the viral load is building in the nasopharyngeal passage, and that's when the virus can be detected by the PCR approach. Symptoms can start much later after exposure, typically around 10 days. And so it's important then for individuals to understand that even if you're suspected to be exposed to COVID-19, to get tested as early as possible. How does a virus hijack a cell? This diagram shows the virus with the spike proteins that give it its name. In the way a key only fits a certain lock, the spike protein has to attach to a very specific 
surface receptor protein on the host cell called ACE2. If it does, it can enter the cell and take over or hijack the production line, forcing the cell to create more viral particles. These newly synthesized viruses burst through the cell, killing it, and infecting new cells by attaching it to their ACE2 surface proteins. There are several types of COVID-19 tests. If you've taken a swab test and waited one to two days for the results, it's typically a PCR or polymerase chain reaction test. Like a photocopier, viral genetic material on the swab is multiplied many times until it's detectable. Visitors to Hawaii take this test to show they are not carrying the virus. In fact, most COVID-19 cases here are spread among residents, so-called community spread. The 15-minute rapid antigen test from a nasal swab or saliva sample shows a color change if certain viral proteins, called antigens, are present. They are fast, cheaper than PCR, but a little less accurate. They're used by sports teams, businesses, and schools to monitor for COVID-19. An antibody test uses a drop of blood to look for antibodies produced by your immune system after vaccination or recovering from COVID-19. A positive test shows you are likely to be protected against further infection. This slide shows how our immune system responds. Notice how the amount of virus increases, then drops as our immune system produces antibodies. Because people are contagious before symptoms appear, contact tracers contact people who interacted with a positive person to ask them to get tested or self-quarantine. If you're not vaccinated, your body is on its own after COVID-19 infection. Most people with the virus only have mild cases and recover on their own. This is the top diagram. But sometimes a person's immune system doesn't react normally, leading to severe complications, even death. This is why all of us who can should get vaccinated. How do vaccines work? Well, there are three federally approved vaccines that have already been tested to work against the virus. All use snippets of the spike protein that cause our immune system to produce antibodies that recognize and disable the virus. It does so by preventing the virus to infect your cells. Basically, the vaccine prepares our body to look out and be ready for the virus. It acts like a smoke detector that alerts us to put out a fire before it gets too dangerous. How do antibodies work? This animation shows the antibodies in green attaching to the spike protein of the virus. This prevents the virus from docking with the ACE2 receptor on the cell. There are many benefits to you and the community if you're vaccinated. So far, the vaccine has been shown to significantly reduce infections, which in turn help you to protect your community from COVID-19. If no one can be infected, the virus dies out and cases of COVID-19 end. This is why schools require Hawaii's keiki to be vaccinated against diseases like polio and the measles. Three vaccines are approved in Hawaii. Vaccines are free to people 12 and older. Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech mRNA vaccines need two shots and protect 94% of people from getting COVID-19. The Johnson & Johnson one-shot vaccine is 74% effective, but it is more convenient and helps Hawaii reach community immunity more rapidly. How long will immunity last? Studies to determine this are underway. We know the virus has mutated into different variants, some more contagious or more deadly. Most vaccinated people are protected, but a few cases of fully vaccinated people getting infected have been detected in Hawaii. This is why we need to think about vaccines as one more layer of protection. Now we are in a vaccine versus variance race to reach at least 70% vaccination rate when community immunity causes the virus to die out. This shows how vaccines increase our level of protection against COVID-19. Number one shows that if no one is vaccinated, in blue, a contagious person, in red, can infect many people. This is an epidemic. In number two, as more people get vaccinated, fewer people get infected. As of May 2021, we are at this stage. Finally, in number three, when most people are vaccinated, in yellow, even those who are not vaccinated are protected, though a few cases may still occur. This is what we want to achieve with community immunity. If variants cause reinfection, booster shots to block them may be needed. Research is currently underway. This shows the Swiss cheese model of the protection against COVID-19. Find the mouse eating a hole in the Swiss cheese. Each slice represents a layer of protection between the virus on the left and the person 
on the right. But each protective layer has holes that allow the virus to pass through. Approved vaccines are the latest, most effective slice of cheese. But more infective variants are like more mice eating more holes in the vaccination slice. As long as there are active COVID-19 cases, the virus will keep mutating. What can you do to strengthen your personal Swiss cheese model of protection? What about your Ohana? Vaccines are free to people 12 and older. And they are the fastest, safest way to reach community immunity. There are many questions about COVID-19. Let's go over a few of these. First, can COVID-19 vaccines infect you with COVID-19? No, the vaccines being tested are made from synthetic laboratory-made pieces copied from SARS-CoV-2, not the whole virus. Therefore, the vaccines cannot cause infection or cause you to get COVID-19 illness. Think about it this way. You can't ride a bicycle if it's missing key parts. The virus can't make copies of itself without all its parts. So in a similar way, the tiny parts of the spike protein in the vaccine make your immune system think it's the virus, so it builds up antibodies to prevent the real virus from attaching to the sites of your cells and taking them over. So the vaccine, with only a small part of the virus, can't cause COVID-19. Can you be vaccinated and still contract the COVID-19 virus? Yes, although this is very rare. Viruses mutate, and if the mutation affects a spike protein, the antibodies that are generated from the vaccines may not attach to it and prevent it from attaching to sites on your cells. The virus can enter and force your cell to make more mutated viruses and attack new cells. These variants are behind the increase of cases affecting people who have not been vaccinated. So far, reinfections of fully vaccinated people have been rare and mild. If you don't have symptoms, can you give the virus to someone? Yes. When you're infected and before symptoms occur, you can infect others who breathe in droplets and aerosols you release. A vaccinated person has antibodies to fight off the virus, but those not vaccinated are at risk of infection. Here's some information and help for your Ohana. If you are worried that you or someone you know might be exposed to or have COVID-19, here's a hotline for information and help. Tests are free, and so are vaccinations. If you're far from Wa'anae, you'll get the information you need and suggestions for a health center closer to home. For more information, please visit us at pack.info. We hope this short presentation has been a useful guide to COVID-19 testing and vaccines. For more information, please visit us at www.pack.info. E